pickers of pick with track toy reconstruction for proton computer tomography with machine learning algorithms. Okay, so welcome everybody in this late afternoon. So my talk will be strongly connected to Joffrey's because what I'm doing is just another part of the whole project in the Proton City. I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Dr. Gabor Pop in the Utrecht University and the supervision of uh, Gabor Biro uh, here at Wigner and also the part of the Bergen PCT collaboration. So because Joffrey mentioned uh, many um, motivation and, and the ID next to the hadron therapy, I will just give you a quick reminder about it and some important details, what is important to us um, in the way that how we try to process uh, the data, the detector signals. And then I will show you some of the results that we could get uh, out of the whole project. So first, let's just go back to hadron therapy and make it clear to those who are not coming from the physics uh, background. So when we are talking about hadron therapy as a, uh, as a type of uh, cancer therapy, which uses um, protons uh, instead of uh, gamma photons to be able to uh, treat the cancer the way it does, just try to maximize the, uh, the positive energy, uh, um, which can be shown by this so-called Bragg peak. So where the most energy is deposited by these particles, that's where they uh, do the most harm uh, to the cells. And this uh, hadron therapy, it means just we try to uh, localize it uh, inside the tumor, therefore uh, destroying uh, the tumor uh, instead of the healthy cells. And we are trying to focus on that. And this is how the hadron therapy works. That's the ID next to it. And um, it is said that it uh, could be in uh, an ambulant treatment, which means it's a one-time treatment. But now they, they are saying um, that actually needs some more iteration, so not just one. But in the past, it has said it could be done by only one treatment. So the challenge is what Joe mentioned uh, is actually a bit harder to uh, give a good description um, in terms of protons and what sort of energies they are slowing them inside the human body. And that's what that's why we need uh, these calculations that Joffrey is doing because we need a, a full map uh, of the patient's body uh, in terms of the stopping power uh, on the protons that are incoming into the to the body. And also, which is a very important part, that uh, data processing needs to be fast enough uh, for the treatment. And it's, it's a very crucial part. So not just accuracy, but uh, also uh, evaluation speed must be sufficient enough. So um, uh, about some ideas about the proton computer tomography, uh, so we are using a detector system, and for um, for the mapping or the PCT, uh, we use uh, sort of high energy proton beams that are um, in our current setting is two hundred mev. It it varies about that uh, amount, and um, it decides where is the peak of the hard of uh, the energy deposition. So the more energy they have, the later uh, it will show uh, that peak, uh, this one. So that's why we are tuning up the energy, because then uh, the deposited energy won't be inside the patient, but uh, inside the detector system. So uh, then we uh, measure or um, try to uh, log where the particles hit the detector system. And from that, we are trying to um, figure out uh, which 
particle heat belong to uh, which particle. Uh, we are using uh, the, the tech system that is uh, under development and construction by the Bergen PCT uh, collaboration. Uh, and it has some hardware specifics. But the interesting part, which I would like to talk about a little because it was necessary for us um, in terms of um, defining the structure and the method that we use, that it has two tracking layers in the beginning and the rest of the layers are the colorimetric layer. What it means that the first two uh, layers in this detector system uh, are just there with, uh, with a bigger distance in between them than in the later layers. And there is no uh, stopping material in between them. So using the first two layer, uh, one can define what was the what was the scattering angle belonging to the particle, but then uh, we need to uh, calculate what was the energy of this particle of the incoming uh, particles, and how we can do that. Uh, you one cannot just measure the the energy of the incoming particle. We need to uh, the incoming protons. So one needs to find where it stopped, and then from that uh, we can reconstruct what was the initial speed, uh, the initial kinetic energy uh, of these protons. <laughs> so that's uh, for that reason. Uh, right now we are. Uh, trying to use machine learning algorithms to uh, reconstruct these trajectories inside the detector system. The reason we are decided to use uh, some machine learning methods to do this because they are uh, insanely fast uh, when they are trained, so they can evaluate fast and they are able to learn complex connection between the data, which we not necessarily know. So sometimes they can uh, yield better results than one originally would expect. Um, as for the reconstruction part, so what we need to uh, produce for Jofi to be able to do her reconstruction, that we need to gain the scattering angle of the particles and also the uh, initial kinetic energy uh, of this particle, and then we are able to um, continue with the image reconstruction. But for that, we need to match these uh, particle trajectories, and uh, we need to do it correctly. Uh, the data we are currently using is created by the open jate uh, simulation engine, which is just a medical extension for Geron4, if someone knows that, basically for um, simulating um, high energy particles for medical purposes. And it's, it's uh, very helpful for us because then we can uh, do supervised learning tasks in this data because we have the tracking information. And we can create large number of events, uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of events that we can feed to the to the neural network. Uh, we usually do the measurement in hundreds uh, of frames, which means that the incoming particles that we are trying to uh, the incoming particle tracks we are trying to reconstruct. Uh, reconstruct is around 100, 200 particles. And uh, what we have as an information in the middle of every hit, which is the X and Y coordinate, and also in which layer they are. So uh, basically, it means just, just a number of which uh, where they are. And also, we have their size. So what, how big of a hit they made on the detector system which means what kind of uh, kinetic energy they had when they were passing through. And uh, we tried to uh, do this uh, track reconstruction and we find that the main issue there uh, or the hardest part to do 
is actually to make the matching in between the layers. So which part, which hit belongs to which particle. And for the, the basic ID that we try to use is to do a so-called Sinkhorn Gumball uh, matching or the Sinkhorn algorithm. What it does, it just gets the, the uh, distance in between the two sets of um, these um, detector points. It, it can be Euclidean distance, which we are currently using, or some other measure of distance. But um, at the time that we are trying, uh, it seems doesn't make uh, any difference if we, we are using other measurement for the distance. And then we, uh, we divide it uh, with the so-called temperature parameter and we uh, put it into the exponent. Uh, and what it does, it will give us back a matrix about the distances. So similar to uh, a distance matrix, uh, but uh, with different result um, values. And what we are trying to do or gain from the separator is then if we start to um, normalize the columns and the rows, uh, basically what we want to gain about it uh, is, a, is a connection probability uh, matrix. So which particle uh, would connect to, to another one or which detector hit uh, would one connect to the other one with the most uh, probability. So what we are trying is to gaining the Sinkhorn uh, operator for the particles, and then we try to normalize it. And if we normalize the rows, you can see that the sum of the rows will be one, but the sum of the columns will not be uh, one. So what one can do is just try to iterate more and more and more uh, until they start to converge when the row, when the sum of the rows and the sum of the columns uh, are one. Intuitively, it means that uh, we want the case where one particle is connected to, so one particle hit is only connected to one other particle hit, uh, and that would these probabilities want to make, uh, mean. Because in our case, uh, accuracy is important, but we don't want just uh, this high accuracy. Uh, what we want is that the particle uh, tracks that we could reconstruct would be surely true particle tracks. So we want to maximize the true positive values uh, because not all the, the tracks needs to be reconstructed for Joffe to be able to go on with her work. So. Uh, another thing which we try uh, use for improvement, because normally uh, within the carolimetric Carol layers, uh, the sinkhorn operation would seem uh, enough for track reconstruction. So, so it showed us a uh, really high um, um, accuracy in, in terms of track reconstruction. But the problem was uh, where we tried to connect uh, the data points in between the colorimetric layers and the tracking layers, and also in between the tracking layers, because uh, at the time um, it was uh, a bit harder to uh, to do that, and syn the synchron operator was just not enough. So what we tried is that we created a, a small neural network that will uh, predict for uh, using the previous layers information. So where were these hits in the previous layers? And then uh, just predict uh, other particles where they should be um, in the following uh, detector layer. And that's what you can see here is that uh, the, the blue triangles is where the actual hits are in the detector system and the green uh, circles are where our model predicted uh, these uh, these hits. So from that, uh, we can do another uh, matching using uh, the synchron operator 
and then we have much more uh, more accurate results in terms of structural construction. Um, and another uh, very good uh, thing about the sinkhorn operation that it's easy to implement it uh, with uh, deep learning frameworks such as TensorFlow or Py PyTorch. And then when one using this matching algorithm with the deep learning methods, uh, the whole thing can run on the GPU and uh, save uh, an insane amount of time for us. So for tracker construction, it's, it's very uh, good to use uh, this algorithm. And so as I just mentioned before, what, how the data flow looks like, we are starting to reconstruct the, the tracks throughout the whole uh, detector system in the colorimetric layers. Uh, this uh, step is not uh, parallelized uh, now, but it can run parallelly because the synchron operators do not depend on each other. So uh, it might take even more time. Uh, it might gain even more time to us. And then the part which is uh, which can't be uh, done parallelly is when we are trying to. Uh, reconstruct uh, the data in between the third, the second, and the first layer. And the reason why I said it's that we are going from backwards uh, into the front, uh, because when one starting it's from the end of the detector system, where uh, the least amount of particle arrived, because some of them just leave the detector system, but some of them just stops earlier, it's easier to find the connection uh, if there is just a few uh, particles. And from that, one can start to um, uh, build these trajectories. So it's it's a bit easier. But then again, in the tracking layers, uh, where we needed to use machine learning to actually improve um, the reconstruction accuracy. And some results that we could gain. So the first thing is when one starts to use uh, only the synchron accuracy uh, for different detector layers. And so as you can see in most of the colorimetric layers, uh, the accuracy is, is uh, over 80%, uh, which is very, very good. And then as we are closing uh, to the, so when we start to, uh, reach the the part where the particles start to stop. Uh, it's hard to uh, actually connect them with high accuracy in between those layers uh, because there uh, are many particles uh, that are uh, stopping, and it's and the accuracy measurement is done for the whole particle system. So that's why they have low values. But as you can see, in between the first and the second layer, uh, one can see a, a big drop uh, in the accuracy. And this is what's like the most important to us to, to correct. Uh, and so if we uh, used um, the machine learning methods that I mentioned, uh, you can see that the cumulative accuracy here uh, which means that reconstructing uh, detector layers till the fifth layer has like a 80 percent accuracy but then again if we are going deeper and deeper in the detector system uh, the model has more chance to to make a wrong connection and then creating a, a wrong uh, reconstructed uh, particle trajectory and so when you start to see that the accuracy is not going down is because these are the detector layers where the particle starts to stop. And uh, we uh, made some um, manual correction in the code. So where the code does not want to connect with zeros with other zeros because it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, about time and which is a very, very important part. Uh, the maximum time for tractor construction uh, should be in between two and six milliseconds. 
And as you can see, our maximum track reconstruction time took around uh, eight, 0.8 milliseconds. So it's very fast compared to the, the limit, which we cannot go. Um, so we cannot go uh, uh, over this limit because that would take too much time for the track reconstruction. It's, uh, this measurement was done by the VSC Labs uh, Cluster 4 GPU, so it's a GTX 1080. Um, it can uh, yield a bit better results in the A100, but not in the, not with a given magnitude, just slightly or a bit better um, numbers. And this was um, briefly my talk about what we tried to do uh, for the Bergen PCT and what results we could achieve uh, in it um, as, a, as a future plan. We are currently writing a publication about it, uh, what we have done and what are the results. And also we tried to integrate it uh, into the Bergen PCT collaboration, the whole uh, data flow our methods and uh, thank you very much for your kind attention thank you for your presentation uh, we have time for a few brief questions uh, how is this uh, uh, track construction algorithm compared to the track reconstruction done at CERN is it different or is it similar uh, so the main difference uh, compared to the CERN one uh, is so what we are trying to achieve, it's somewhat faster than those algorithms. Uh, I do not know exactly what's the accuracy uh, that the CERN algorithms uh, can achieve. Uh, the only thing I know that inside the collaboration there was uh, there was a group that tried to use those algorithms uh, for this project, and for them they took uh, more time uh, to reconstruct uh, these um, trajectories. So that's why uh, inside the collaboration we are trying to go. Uh, with machine learning. Uh, actually, in the collaboration, there are two groups that are working to track reconstruction with machine learning. Uh, there's a German group that's working on the two. Uh, they yield better results, but then again, their, uh, their uh, evaluation time is just very, very uh, big. So what we are trying to do is in the future, or we are discussing it, that we could combine the two methods uh, to uh, to be able to evaluate it fast, but then again, uh, save those good accuracies that they have right now. And just one more, how many tracks do you have in, in that you need to uh, reconstruct in the same data set or same measurement? So, well, yeah, that's, uh, it's a very good question. Uh, as I said, uh, as far as I know, currently inside the detector system, there are like uh, some hundred of tracks. Uh, so that's why we are using this amount uh, because that's what's coming out from the detectors or something like that, uh, if I remember correctly. And so, for example, the measurements, so here I used exactly 100 uh, particles that we are trying to uh, reconstruct but then again it was done by multiple batches so parallelly uh, and that it was just averaged out for the batches thank you the photonics question but one uh, thing that uh, yeah, we have to reconstruct around 1 million tracks yeah this is what Jolfi needs and with this method, it's it's around 10 minutes to make. This speed we cannot achieve with a, a traditional way. 
Uh, and also the difference between uh, this calculation and what, what uh, Alice is doing. In Alice, uh, there are much higher energies. The particles are going much straight to the rise in here. Uh, it's applied, so you can even have a guess on, on the momentum. Yeah, we do not have any guess on it. Yeah, so that's a... How, how crucial is the, the accurate uh, path reconstruction? I mean, that if you interchange two nearby trajectories, is it a, such a big problem? Or physically, what, 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 what is the implication? The problem is, so let to, like interchange uh, one track with another because they are coming very, very close. But then again, if there uh, and we when we do the synchronous algorithm, we try to uh, so we use also the energies uh, of the particles. But if for some cases uh, we have um, an incoming particle that has uh, that stops around I don't know the eighties eighty eighteenth. Uh, detector layer, and some of them will uh, stop at the 23rd uh, detector layer. That will mean that when we are trying to reconstruct the initial kinetic energies, we will doing it wrong based on that we uh, mixed these two um, tracks. But another thing which we are currently working on, but it will be um, let's say it's a different publication, is that um, if we have like these polluted uh, tracks that you just asked, uh, could we still give good um, energy predictions? So that's another thing that we are trying to um, figure out because for Jolfi, uh, it's not needed to be 100% exact about uh, the energy because one cannot even do that. Uh, so we, we might see that in the future we can we might be able to uh, predict the energies uh, in between um, the the limits that that is not a problem. So thank you for your answers, and uh, we are kind of running out of time, also running out of speakers, so. There is some correlation. So, an next.